What is going on guys? Ryan from Living Salty here and welcome back to another episode of Work Smarter Not Harder. In today's video, I'm gonna be helping you guys determine which rod and reel you guys should be using for your specific fishing application and based on your budget. Now, if you guys are returning viewers and are familiar with the Work Smarter Not Harder video, you guys can tell that the set has changed a little bit. We are in fact not in front of my computer today and we are in front of my beautiful new to me 55 gallon fish tank. If you guys are new to the channel or new, around here then i just started a fish tank series on my channel i'll link one of the episodes down below you guys should totally check it out after this video all right so jumping in with the first type of fisherman today is going to be the fisherman that likes to go out to fish inshore but he likes to go to the pier he likes to go to the beach he might like to fish the back country canals maybe on a boat once in a while even that is going to be the perfect application for the do-it-all setup. So if that sounds like you, then the do-it-all setup is going to be the right choice for you. Now what I mean by this do-it-all rod is going to be a nice medium action, about seven foot to eight foot rod with about a 3,000 to 500 size reel on it. Now a perfect example of the do-it-all rod I have right here is a Pen Battle 2 4,000 matched with a seven foot six red bone saltwater inshore rod. Now the reason we call it a do-it-all rod is because that rod I just showed you right there is the exact setup that I caught my 32 inch snook and my 38 inch snook on. Both monster fish and I can catch a lot bigger fish than that even if I wanted to on that setup but I can also take that setup and go fish in fresh water and catch some bass. I could also take that, put a sinker on it, put some bait on it, and I could drop it up to the bottom and go snapper fishing. That is the beauty of the do-it-all rod. Especially if you guys are a beginner fisherman and you're looking, you're like, just getting into the hobby or something and you wanna kinda get just one rod just to start off because you know it is a very expensive hobby to get into, then the do-it-all rod is perfect for you. Now for your do-it-all rod, I would suggest only going with a spinning reel over a conventional reel just because the spinning reel is a lot easier to cast. It's really easy to use. And like I said, it can be used for everything and is way more versatile than the conventional reel. Now some might argue that a bait caster could also be used for bottom fishing and it also is good for casting. So isn't that kind of like a do-it-all reel? And I would argue not. I think that the spinning reels are made for bigger fish. They're really easy to use. And I just, I would highly recommend starting with a spinning reel. It's also a lot easier to cast than a bait caster. I would recommend going with that for your do-it-all rod. All right, so now we're going to segue into something very similar, and this is going to be our land-based fisherman. If you are the kind of person who doesn't go out on boats very often and does a lot of fishing inshore or likes to go freshwater fishing or beach fishing, jetty fishing, and pier fishing, all that kind of stuff, then you know what? That kind of do-it-all rod will be perfect for you. That rod that is about seven foot to eight foot and with a 3000 and 5000 series reel is a really awesome reel for all that kind of land-based fishing. Now you might be wondering why I'm saying that the do-it-all rod should be seven foot to eight foot. Well, I have the two rods right here, which are my two inshore rods right here. One is seven foot, this one's seven six, this one's seven foot. And I definitely prefer my seven foot six over my seven foot rod. And here's why. My seven foot six rod is noticeably better in how far it could cast and how well I could feel the bait twitching around after I've casted it. This is really important for feeling sensitivity and just being able to sling your lure out exactly where you want it. And the only downsides to that seven six foot rod over the seven foot is that it's not as easy to kind of just throw in the truck and it, you know, I end up hitting it on walls and stuff a little bit. And you know, you would think that it's only six inches, so it wouldn't make that big of a difference, but it is pretty noticeable. The seven foot does maneuver around houses and around vehicles and stuff a little bit easier. But overall, if I had to choose one rod, I would go with the seven foot six over the seven foot. So like I said, for my land-based fisherman, that do it all kind of rod with the seven foot to eight foot length and the 3000, 5000 series reel is perfect for all your inshore needs and can catch monster fish. But if you're looking to take your surf fishing or your jetty fishing a little bit more seriously, you're just looking to catch some bigger fish and invest more into it, then a surf casting setup might be right for you. Now these surf casting rods, a lot of times are usually around 10 to 12 feet and some are even greater than that. Now these rods are gonna split up maybe into two or three pieces to make it a lot easier to maneuver around because let's be honest, fitting a 10 foot or a 12 foot rod in your car and moving around your house, it's just not realistic. So how do these surf cast setups actually help you catch more fish? Well, I'll tell you guys, 
That really long rod allows you to sling your bait even further out from the beach, which can help, which can help you reach your bait to desired areas. Now, when you guys are slinging your bait even further out there, what you're gonna need is a larger reel. And my recommendation would be a 6,000 series reel or greater. Now, I would recommend still going with spinning reels, but you can use conventional reels if you like. I don't really know the sizes of the conventional reels off the top of my head, so I'll throw up on the screen what I recommend. But I know the Penn Senators are a cheaper but extremely durable, been tested for a lot of years. They've been around for a really long time, and you can catch anything up to big old sharks with some of them. So I'd highly recommend that reel and once again I'll throw on the screen what size reel I recommend for that. Now the reason that you want these bigger reels is you might end up catching bigger fish even if you're not expecting it and you need greater line capacity. Now we'll start with the second one first, line capacity. Now you think about it, you're tossing your baits further out which means that you're going to need more line because you got to go further out. Now you might be thinking that the other smaller reels, oh they have plenty of line, I could still cast my bait out there, still have enough to reel it back in. Well you know, when you're fishing these baits, let's say you're in the surf and you're fishing for snook, right? And you're using a chunk mullet. You toss your chunk mullet way out there, you're using a smaller reel, you're almost out of line. Now, a big old bull shark swims by, he sees a chunk of mullet, he's feeling a little hungry today. He's gonna eat that chunk mullet, he's gonna take off, then he's gonna spool the line right off your reel, pop, just like that, all your line's gone, your fishing day is ruined. Now, if you put on a bigger reel, you'll be able to apply more drag. So when that bull shark takes your bait unexpectedly, he makes a run, you can put a little bit of pressure on him, get him a little tired, and then you actually have a chance to reel him in because you're not gonna get spooled. So that is why it's really important to put a bigger reel on your surf casting setups. So that is what I recommend for those hardcore inshore fishermen looking to step up the game to a surf casting setup, about a 10 foot to 12 foot rod matched with a 6,000 series or greater reel. Alrighty, and Lastly, we are going to be talking about our boat fish manning. Boy, you guys gotta break out the wallet for this one. <laughs> Just like everything else with boating is gonna cost you a little bit more money. In all seriousness, guys, um, the reason why I do say it will cost you guys a little bit more money is because I recommend having a lot of rods on your boat when you're going fishing. Not just a conventional a spinning, but you're gonna want both. You're gonna want a little mix of heavier rods, lighter rods, conventional spinning. You wanna bring a lot of different poles with you. And here's why. So let's say you're out there fishing for mud snappers. You only brought your conventional bottom fishing setups because you're like, that's what I want to target today. I want some mud snapper for dinner, right? So you only bring your conventional setups with you. Now you're out fishing in 100 to 300 feet of water because that's where the bigger mud snapper are. And all of a sudden, a school dolphins roll up on you. And I'm not talking about the cute flipper ones. I'm talking about the tasty mahi mahi. So they roll up on your boat. They start doing circles around your boat because they know you don't have a spinning rod and they know you can't can't cast anything out them to catch them right now because you're too busy bottom fishing. And they're gonna sit there and taunt you and just do circles around your boat until you go absolutely crazy. <laughs> So this is why you gotta bring a spinning rod with you. You can bring your conventionals because I personally prefer using conventionals for bottom fishing, but you're going to wanna bring that spinning pole with you rigged up for a pitch bait or a lure or something like that. So when that tuna or the mahi or the kingfish or some sort of pelagic rolls up on the boat unexpectedly, you can quickly pitch out a bait, pitch out a lure or something to try to catch it and make your day awesome. So that's why I say if you're a boat fisherman, you're gonna have to kick up a couple extra bucks cause you're gonna wanna bring a variety of rods with you. Now I briefly just talked about bottom fishing. I wanna dive a little bit more into that. Depending on where you are, it depends on what kind of fishing setup you can use for bottom fishing, right? So down here in South Florida, we recently upgraded to the Avid conventional reels, which we absolutely love. And we did this so we can have more line capacity, a little bit more torque, stronger reel can help pull those fish away from the sharks, away from the wrecks. And we're just fishing a really deep, more intense water. But when we were bottom fishing up in New York, we were primarily targeting fluke and porgies and that kind of stuff in the Long Island Sound, where we were mostly fishing, you know, 20 to 40 feet of water. Now in that kind of application, personally, I actually really liked using a bait caster as my bottom fishing rod. It was really easy to just press the button to let out some more line and just keep up with the bottom and start jigging. And I actually really liked using the bait caster. It was a lot of fun, light tackle, and made catching those, you know, five to seven pound fluke a little bit more fun. But down here in fishing in South Florida, it's a little bit more intense. And honestly, you never know what you're gonna get when, <laughs> when something rips out the line on the bottom. And uh, so that's why we upgraded to the heavier Avid conventional reels. 
But also, like I mentioned earlier in the video with the spinning reels and in the do-it-all category, they can also be used to catch snapper if you want. They're just as capable, just a lot of people prefer to use conventional over spinning for bottom fishing. Now, let's talk about the thing that makes the world go round. Yes, I am talking about that green paper, that money. Everybody loves it and nobody likes to spend it. Sorry for the interruption, but if you guys are enjoying this video and finding it helpful so far, it'd really mean a lot if you guys hit that like button for me and maybe even consider subscribing down below. Thank you guys so much, let's get back to the video. So right now, I wanna to talk to my beginner fishermen. Focus in with me. You guys do not need to go out to Walmart best pro shops and everything, buy that shiny gold reel inside that case that costs $300 because you think that is gonna catch you more fish. Absolutely wrong. If you're just starting out fishing and you really just want to get a feel for the hobby, see if you like it, maybe you went on Instagram and you saw a post from Living Salty and saw that, you know, he caught an awesome fish and you want to go out and try fishing yourself, <laughs> make sure you guys go follow me on Instagram if you're not already. So maybe you want to go out and try fishing for yourself, right? So my recommendation, and this might not be the most popular opinion, but I would recommend going to Bass Pro Shops or Walmart or anything like that. Go buy their name brand combo or their cheaper $50 or under spinning do-it-all combo. That way you guys can just get started with fishing. Yes, these rods and reels are not gonna last and not as durable as the more expensive stuff. That's why they cost less. Maybe a year or two down the line, maybe a handle break, you'll break an eye a little bit easier or something like that on it, but you guys are also not dropping $200 on a combo and you guys are getting a feel for fishing, seeing if you like it and determining if you wanna invest more into the hobby later. There's nothing worse than getting into a hobby and hearing this, this and that, you gotta spend this much money in order to have this much success only for you to not catch fish or maybe you invest into some new fish for your aquarium and you end up killing them all. You know, there's nothing worse than dropping all this money on something new and just, you know, not seeking the reward that you thought you would get and being really discouraged from the hobby. We've all been there probably, all done that, and we don't wanna repeat that. So I'm here to tell you that that $50 Walmart or Bass Pro Shops combo will do just fine in catching that snook that you really wanna catch. So after you're done with the Walmart reel, you're like, all right, I really like this fishing thing. You know, I'm looking to step it up a little bit. I would recommend going to the Pen Battle series. Now, I just showed you guys earlier, I got two Pen Battle reels over here. This is the Pen Battle 2. Over there on the ground, I have the Pen Battle 3. This is a 4,000. Over there, I have a 3,000 series. Now, what I would recommend going to Bass Pro Shops and Walmart and go buy yourself the Pen Battle 2 combo, Pen Battle 3 combo, whatever it is, just go out there, buy the combo that they have. Save yourself the headache, guys. You guys don't need to go out buy a rod, then have to worry about what reel to match it and stuff. That's why they make the combo, to make our lives easier as fishermen, right? They've already matched this reel and rod together. You, they know it's gonna work well together. It makes it a lot easier for you. Now, I did look on Walmart and I saw you can get a Pen Battle 2 combo for around $120, which seems like a really good deal and a really easy upgrade to make pretty early on into your fishing hobby. One rod I'd also highly recommend to you guys, this is the rod I personally use for inshore fishing, is the Redbone Rod. This is my Redbone medium action seven foot six saltwater inshore rod. And I can tell you guys, I put this rod through the ringer. Now making these YouTube videos and fishing all the time, you know, I'm really careful with my equipment, but you can only be so careful when, you know, it's still a tool, you know, you have to go in and out of the houses and doors and cars and everything like that. You end up hitting the rod tip a bunch of times and scratching and stuff like that. And I can tell you these red bone rods have held up extremely well. They're very tough rods and I think they only cost about $100. Very good, highly recommend those rods to you guys. And the same thing with the pen battle reels. They are like bulletproof guys. As long as you just take care of them, you're not soaking them in salt water, you know, you use them, you rinse them off of fresh water when you're done with them. You just do your regular maintenance and take care of them. Those reels will last you forever. So when you're looking to step up your game, maybe consider the Pen Battle series. Now, if you got a little bit of extra money to spend and you know, you're feeling a little bougie and you're really feeling like you want to step up your fishing arsenal game, I'd recommend the Pen Spin Fisher and the Pen Slammer. These are two reels, to me, are like top of the line spinning reels. I know there are spinning reels that cost a lot more money, but in my opinion, once you hit that value of about $300 for the reel of the Spin Fisher and the Slammer, I think you've honestly hit the peak of 
how much value you're getting for your money when it comes to the spinning reels. I know there are spinning reels like the Shimano Stella, which I personally never use, that costs, you know, $1,500 or something like that, that in my opinion is gonna do the same exact thing that the Spin Fisher or the Slammer is gonna do for you. That's just my personal opinion. Don't come hating at me, but I've never used that reel, so I can't speak from experience. I could just speak from knowledge, research, and everything like that that I've done. So if you're looking to step up your game, maybe consider a Pen Spin Fisher or a Pen Slammer. All right. And there you go, guys. That is my opinion for your specific application of fishing and your budget. Like I said with the budget, my beginners, stay focused. Don't spend a ton of money. Just get a nice name brand rod and reel combo. And maybe you got a little extra money, maybe spring for the pen battle combo. If not, that name brand will do just fine to get you started fishing. Maybe consider upgrading to that pen battle combo in the future. And then when you're really ready to step up that game, consider something like the pen spin fisher or the pen slammer. And that's gonna wrap it up for today's video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you guys hit that like button. It really helps me out a lot. And consider subscribing down below if you wanna see some more Living Salty content in the future. If you guys are interested in some more Work Smarter Not Harder videos, make sure you guys check out this one over here on the left side of the screen. I really think you guys are gonna like that. And until my next video, remember to keep living salty.